Hello everyone and welcome to Rollinish. I'm Matt and in this video we're looking at Xanathar's Guide to Everything, specifically at the Monk class and the monastic traditions that are featured in Xanathar's Guide to Everything for you to choose from in addition to what's offered to you in your player's handbook. If you haven't done so already, be sure to check out our class playlist. In there, you're gonna find an intro to all the classes and what they get, levels one through 20, in addition to all the subclass features offered in the player's handbook and our take on that. We're gonna to start today with looking at the Way of the Drunken Master for the Monk class. This is really, really fun. Um, does this mean you have to pay play a, a drunk monk? No, you could. Um, what it really means is the way the monk moves. Okay, so in the description it says, the way of the drunken master teaches its students to move with jerky, unpredictable movements of a drunkard. A drunk master sways, tottering on unsteady feet to present what seems like an incompetent combatant who proves frustrating to engage. The drunken master's erratic stumbles conceal a carefully executed dance of blocks, parries, advances, attacks, and retreats. A drunken master often enjoys playing the fool to bring gladness to the despondent or to demonstrate humility to the arrogant. But when a battle is joined, the drunken master can be a maddening, masterful foe. And that's no joke. We're going to take a look at the features that you get at 3rd, 6th, 11th, and 17th levels. Starting with the bonus proficiencies at 3rd level, you gain proficiency in the performance skill if you don't already have it. So if you know you want to build Way of the Drunken Master and you're picking your skill proficiencies at character creation, don't pick performance because it's a freebie here. <laughs> your martial arts technique gives you uh, a mix of combat training with dancing so you just have fluid movements um uh throughout and it makes you hard to hit as it goes on it gets more clear why uh drunken technique at third level you learn how to twist and turn your body as part of your fury of blows so whenever you spend key points as a bonus action to do fury of blows typically that's two unarmed strikes um, whenever you do that as a way of a drunken master, you gain the benefit of disengage and your walking speed increases by 10 feet until the end of your current turns. So you could take a turn, make your attack action if you want, bonus action, spend some key points for fury of blows, Either continue to punch that target and move to another, or just move to another and start punching. I'm going to hit this guy over here, and I'm going to zip over here and hit this guy over here. You're starting to move around the map without consequence, which is nice because of that disengage being part of the Fury of Blows action. It allows you to disengage and move should you choose without incurring an opportunity attack against you. At sixth level, you get Tipsy Sway. You can move in sudden swaying ways. You gain the following benefits. Okay, a part of your tipsy sway, you have two different special features. Leap to your feet. Whenever you're knocked prone, you stand up using only five feet of movement, not half your movement. So if you're prone, it's five feet to stand, not half. That's fantastic. Or you have redirect attack. When a creature misses you with a melee attack roll, you could spend a key point as a reaction to cause the attack to hit a creature of your choice other than the attacker that you can see within five feet of you. So if you're starting to get surrounded by enemies and you got some enemies within five feet of you and a enemy misses you with that melee attack, you can spend those key points. It hits that guy instead. So that's pretty cool. That's a, a shield, if you will. Drunkard's Luck. Starting at 11th level, when you make an ability check, an attack roll, or a saving throw, and you have disadvantage on that roll, you could spend two key points to cancel out the disadvantage. That's called Drunkard's Luck. Like it. I like it a lot. At 17th level, you get Intoxicating Frenzy. 
When you use your Fury of Blows, you can make up to three additional attacks with it for a total of five Fury of Blows attacks. One, two, three, four, five unarmed strikes, right? Or kicks, but I'm seated, so I'm going to punch. <laughs> Provided that each Fury of Blows attack targets a different creature this turn. So if you combine your Intoxicating Frenzy and your Drunken Technique, you could take the attack action, attack a target. Maybe you drop them, maybe you don't. Fury of Blows, disengage away from that target, go to a different target. And because I am using a different target, different creature this turn i can go and punch or kick five unarmed strikes to a different target so that's how you stack that okay you stack it by fury of blows hitting disengaging and then using those five fury of blows attacks on a different creature so you could really take care of two with a lot of hits a lot of damage if you're hitting so that's the way of the drunken master. It's kind of like uh, it appears as though you're drunk because the fluid movement, but it makes you more agile and nimble. It's kind of like when they say you drink too much and you fall down the stairs or get in an accident. You don't you don't get as hurt because your body didn't tense up. It's kind of like that. That's kind of how I picture this when I'm reading this through. Okay. Next option is the way of the Kensei. Now, the way of the Kensei is uh, they're weapon-based monks. They train relentlessly with their weapons to the point where their weapon is basically like an extension of their body. Um, <clears throat> founded on a mastery of sword fighting, the tradition has expanded to include many weapons. It doesn't have to just be swords. They see a weapon the same way a calligrapher sees a pen or an artist sees a brush. And such mastery makes a Kensei a peerless warrior. It takes a lot of devotion and practice, right? So you are a devoted, focused martial artist, but with a weapon. So one of the first things that came to my mind was like Donatello. Or one of any of the Ninja Turtles, really. Shut up. Um, <laughs> you get... Four different features at levels 3, 6, 11, and 17, starting with Path of the Kensei at level 3. Um, your martial arts training leads you to master the certain use of weapons. It also gives you the ability to use calligraphy or painting. So you're going to gain the following benefits. There are four to your Path of the Kensei. So first, there's Kensei weapons. You get to choose two types of weapons. They can be either simple or martial weapons that lack the heavy and special property. As long as they lack special and heavy, martial simple, they, you could use that. And a longbow. So you want something uh, in that category. You gain proficiency with those weapons if you don't already have it. And they become monk weapons to you. When you reach 6th, 11th, 17th levels in Monk, you can choose another type of weapon, either melee or ranged, to be a Kensei weapon to you, as long as they continue to, to follow the criteria. So you get two right off the bat at 3rd level, a 3rd at 6th, a 4th at 11th, a 5th weapon at 17th. So you can have up to five Kensei weapons. They're your Monk weapons. You're proficient with them. That's what you practice with. I would be very judicious about what that weapon is. Um, I would try and pick something unique. Like I've had someone, or, or, or no, I did it actually. I talked to my DM about, hey, can I use a club as my weapon? Because it's a monk. It can be a monk weapon. It's a simple weapon. But for flavor, they're nunchucks. So they don't have reach, right? It's five foot reach, just like most weapons. But instead of a club, I'm just, and I'm nunchucking them. Uh, makes total sense to me to have that and have it be a Kensei weapon. 
All right, this, the second option you get is called Agile Parry. If you make an unarmed strike as part of the attack action on your turn and are holding a Kensei weapon, so you have a weapon in your hand, but you chose to punch, you can use the weapon to defend yourself. You gain a plus two bonus to your AC until the start of your next turn while the weapon is in your hand and you're not incapacitated. So you're just kind of like at the ready to deflect a blow with that weapon. Next, you have Kensei's Shot. You can use a bonus action on your turn to make your ranged attacks with a Kensei weapon more deadly. When you do so, any target you hit with a ranged attack using a Kensei weapon deals an extra 1d4 damage of the weapon's type. You retain the benefit until the end of the current turn. So you do that for this turn, extra d4 damage, just because you have a Kensei shot. And that's just a thing. It's not taking up a bonus action. It's just a thing that you get starting at third level. You just have to pay attention during your turn to start tacking these things on. Lastly, the last option is Way of the Brush. You get proficiency with your choice of calligrapher supplies or painter supplies as a skill. All right, at sixth level, you get one with the blade. Um, essentially, you get two things... For one with the blade, magic Kensi weapons. Your Kensi weapons, when you reach sixth level, are considered magical for the purpose of overcoming resistance and immunity to non-magical attacks. Then there's Death Strike. When you hit a target with a Kensei weapon, you can spend one key point to cause the weapon to deal extra damage to the target equal to your martial arts die. You could use this feature once on each of your turns. Okay, so however many key points you have, um, you can tack that on. At 11th level, sharpen the blade. You gain the ability to augment your weapons further with your key. As a bonus action, you can expend up to three key points to grant one Kensei weapon that you touch a bonus to attack and damage rolls uh, when you attack with it. The bonus equals the number of key points you spent, up to three. So this is essentially spending a key point for a plus one or two key points for a plus two or three key points for the plus three to make it a plus three weapon. Um, <clears throat> does that make sense? However many you decide, that's what it costs. So a plus one is one. Um, the bonus lasts for a minute or until you use this feature again. This feature has no effect on a magic weapon that already has this. So we're talking mundane weapons that you have, okay? <clears throat> that you are making your Kensei weapons. Then you can make them magical when you get to sharpen the blade at 11th level. Unerring accuracy at 17th level. You, If you miss with an attack roll using a monk weapon on your turn, you can re-roll it. You can only do this once per turn. Once per turn? Oh, I missed? No, I don't. <laughs> so uh, a monk is going to get a lot of benefits to try and um, make a difference in combat. I know a lot of players that don't play monk because they misunderstand the class. They think that they're not going to do a lot of damage because they're just punching. That's not true. Monks have weapons called monk weapons, um, but it's a very specific set of weapons for the class to be able to use. Um, so you can use that either the weapons or your unarmed strikes. But the amount of strikes that you can get with the amount of key points that you decide to spend could really make up the difference and make it, you know, doing as much damage as the rest of the party. So I just, you think these big swords and things like that, swinging those around, they're going to do some damage. But if I punch you in the face six times on a turn i could do the same amount of damage you're doing with one or two swings so it adds up um and that is the way of the kensei there's a third option here in xanathar's guide to everything the way of the sun soul so i don't know a lot about anime i'm not going to pretend that i do but when i think of like a monk in an anime type setting the Way of the Sun Soul is what comes to my mind. And I, I think for those of you who might watch anime, you might make the connection yourself too. But 
Monks of the Sun Soul learn to channel their life energy into searing bolts of light. They teach that meditation can unlock the ability to unleash the indomitable light shed by the soul on every living creature. I'm starting to get like Shaolin monk vibes. Um, you get features at 3rd, 6th, 11th, and 7th level. At 3rd level, you get a feature called Radiant Sun Bolt. You gain a new attack option that you can use when you take the attack action. This special attack is a ranged attack with a range of 30 feet. You're proficient with it, so add your proficiency bonus and add your dexterity modifier to the attack and damage rolls. It's going to deal radiant damage, and it's going to start with a d4. Now that die is going to increase to a d6, a d8, and so on as you level up in Monk. And you can see that on the Monk table in your player's handbook. When you take the attack action on your turn and use this special attack, you can spend one key point to make the attack twice as a bonus action. And when you gain the extra attack feature, this special attack can be used for any of the attacks you make as part of the attack action. So it could be the first or the second during your extra attack. So essentially, it's like a beam of light that you're going to shoot out of your hand hand and basically at, at somebody to deal radiant damage it's pretty sick at sixth level you get searing arc strike um, immediately after you take the attack action on your turn you can spend two key points to cast burning hands as a bonus action you can spend additional key points to cast that burning hands at a higher level each additional key point you spend increases the level by one. So if you're going to do it as a bonus action at first level, it's just the key point. But if I spend six key points, I'm casting that at sixth level. Okay, Burning hands, what that does is it creates a 15-foot cone that comes out of your hands of fire. And it's going to deal 3d6 fire damage at first level. Now, if you're going to upcast it by spending more key points, for every key point is a level. So if you spend six key points, it's a sixth level burning hands. So if it's 3d6 at first level, and every time I cast it at second or higher, I get additional d6 at second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth level. Five plus the original three, that's 8d6. I spend six key points, I essentially cast fireball in a third. The 15 foot cone <laughs> that's crazy uh that's how you up 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 spell it we call it okay so that's pretty cool um as a bonus action i can so i can attack you whoosh, hit you with my staff maybe a second shot with my staff where i punch you and then i burning hands you that's i'm all about that <laughs> well let's let's get it let's get it because that cone i can get some additional bad guys they're grouped together last uh next we have searing sunburst at 11th level as an action you create an orb and hurl it at a point you can choose within 150 feet where it erupts into a sphere of radiant light for a brief but deadly instant each creature in that 20 foot radius must succeed on a constitution saving throw or take 2d6 radiant damage a creature doesn't need to make the save if the creature is behind total cover that is opaque. You can increase the sphere's damage by spending key points. For each point you spend, up to a max of 3, it increases the damage by 2d6. So 2d6, right off the bat, if I spend 3 key points, I'm getting 6d6 on top of the original 2d6. That's 8d6. So, again, and it's radiant damage, which I love that because not, not a ton of things are resistant or immune to radiant damage. Like, good celestials are, but there's a lot of creatures that don't have that. So you got a good chance of landing that hit and doing some damage. Lastly, at 17th level, you become... Wreathed and luminous magical aura. You shed a bright light in a 30-foot radius and a dim light for an additional 30 feet beyond that. You can extinguish or restore the light as a bonus action. 
If a creature hits you with a melee attack while this light shines, you can use your reaction to deal radiant damage to that creature. Just, it, it says you can use your action to deal radiant damage. Not attempt to attack. It's you use your reaction to just deal radiant damage. And the damage is going to be 5 plus your wisdom modifier. It's not a ton, but it's a good amount. I'll take that. I'll take anything I can get. Okay. So, my friends, that is the Way of the Sun Soul, the Way of the Kensei, and the Way of the Drunken Master. You will find these uh, monastic traditions or subclass options in Xanathar's Guide to Everything. And it's one of the options you should consider in addition to what's in the Player's Handbook when you're ready to choose one at third level assuming your DM is good with you using the features from Xanathar's Guide to Everything. I don't know why they wouldn't, um, but always check with your DM. Next up, we're going to be looking at what comes from Xanathar's Guide to Everything in terms of the subclass options for the Paladin class. Until then, keep rolling those dice, and we'll see you at the table.